It is non-exercise activity germ... <laughs> Hey everyone and welcome to my channel. I'm Nikki and today's video is going to be a quick sit down talking video. I always say they're going to be quick and then sometimes they end up long, sometimes I keep them short. So I don't know how today's will go but I'm hoping I can get through this pretty quickly. So if you enjoyed this video or find it helpful please go ahead and give it a like and subscribe to my channel. I really really appreciate it and let's get started with our topic today. So today I'm just giving you guys 10 weight loss hacks and tricks that actually work that have helped me to stay on track to lose 70 pounds and then maintain my weight loss for almost three years now. When I say hacks, I feel like people think of like quick fixes and these aren't quick fixes. To me, a hack is something that makes things maybe easier or is like a little trick that can keep you going or keep you doing what you're trying to do, whatever, instead of trying to find a quick cheat or something like that. So when I say 10 weight loss hacks, these are 10 things that just have made my journey easier. They've made it better for me to stay on track. And I feel like if you're struggling and you just do one or two of these things even, that little change can really, really make a difference. So I hope these help you guys. And I'm gonna go ahead and start with the first one, which is to eat an apple every day after dinner. So this is something specifically for me that has worked so well because I am someone that whenever I finish a meal or something savory or salty or something, I want something sweet immediately after. And using fruit as an option. So when I say apple, you can do any fruit, honestly. And using fruit after a meal has worked so well for me because first of all, it's packed with nutrients. Fruit has so many benefits. It's got fiber and just all of the good things that come along with fruit. Of course, you do have to be careful not to eat too much fruit, but that's how it is with everything. But anyway, after I finish a meal and I want something sweet, what I try to do is have some type of fruit. At first, this just started with doing an apple every single day after dinner. I have a honey crisp apple, those are my favorite. And I started that pretty much at the beginning of my weight loss journey and have been doing it since then. I always make sure to have honey crisp apples on hand because once I finish my dinner, I just eat it right after. What it does is it really satisfies my sweet tooth right away. It kind of fills me up a little bit because it does have fiber and it's filling, but then it still allows me to have something after because it's a zero point food. It helped fill me up a little, but now I can have my real dessert after dinner, which is what I do every single night anyway. So I've also followed this for lunch, like if I finish lunch and I have like a sandwich and chips, then I'll have my grapes afterward because I always want something sweet. A lot of times I want like a candy bar or something. And so if I just have my grapes after, usually that is enough to satisfy my sweet tooth that maybe I'll have like a protein bar and a little bit or something or a verb energy bar or something right after lunch. But usually it holds me over and keeps me from being tempted by sweets and desserts and stuff because that's usually what I want. Anyway, just having a fruit after a meal really can help. And it doesn't mean that you're having that in place of whatever thing you want to have because again I have everything in moderation I enjoy the things I love I just have my apple first and then I can have my dessert and it always helps me feel just a little bit more satisfied okay hack number two is something that I talk about a lot because progress pictures have really helped me on my weight loss journey they've helped me especially when I get hung up on the scale or I'm not seeing progress and I feel like I'm really sticking to it it can be really discouraging and so what I do is I take a lot of progress pictures but what I had always done in the past was take progress pictures on my phone and then delete them before I could even make any progress so what I've done, and this has been so helpful for me, is using the hidden folder on my phone. So now I don't have to worry about people going through my camera roll, not that people are always on my phone, but sometimes you like show someone a picture and they like swipe through your pictures and what if they see your progress picture? Like for me personally, I just didn't want people seeing my pictures. So what I do when I have one is I take the pictures. So like this is one of my original pictures I had. If you hit the three dots in the top, on the iPhone and then you hit the hide button, you can hit hide photo and it sends it to another folder, which is the hidden folder. Then when you go to your albums on your iPhone, you just scroll down to the bottom and you can see there's a hidden folder right down here. So if you click the hidden folder, it's actually protected by a passcode. So mine is just my face ID and then it opens the folder for me to access all my hidden photos. That's just a little tip that has helped me to actually save my progress photos so that I can keep them over time because they have helped me to stay on track so much. They've motivated me so much and they've helped me when I feel like I'm not making progress. Okay, hack number three is to ingredient prep. So I mentioned this a lot because it's really the thing that keeps me so consistent, but 
I've never been able to be someone who enjoys meal prepping. I know it works for some people, but for me personally, I just do not like to eat the same meals over and over again. And I just always felt like the meal prep meals that we'd make just weren't as good as if we just made a meal fresh. I don't know. For me, it just never worked that way. So what works well for me is prepping ingredients individually. So I'll prep a veggie mix. I prep some bacon that I have cooked in the fridge. I do two ingredient dough pitas or bagels. I do jasmine rice that's in containers turkey burgers or chicken burgers, ground taco meat, shredded taco meat, anything that I can have, even like shredded chicken, anything I can prep. And usually I don't do it all in the same day. I just do it throughout the week. But when I run out of an ingredient, I prep more of it. And then it's just ready in the fridge for me to assemble a meal quickly. So that's why bowls have become such a go-to for me because I always have rice prepped. I always have veggie mix prepped. I always have some type of protein and that alone is enough to start a bowl. And then I can add more veggies, more protein, more sauce or cheese or anything like that. So Ingredient prepping has been so game changing for me on my journey. It's allowed me to stay consistent and it takes away that like, I don't know, getting bored of the same meals and just honestly the overwhelming prep day that I used to have when I would try to do meal prep, it would be like five hours of my day I spent making all these meals. And then all week I just dreaded the meals. I didn't even like them. So again, if it works for you, definitely do it. Meal prep does work for so many people. Just for me personally, it didn't. And ingredient prep has worked so much better. Okay, hack number four is to make fast food meals at home or make restaurant meals at home. Because that is one thing that before Adam and I started our weight loss journey, we got takeout meals one to two times a day. We were eating at restaurants, we were getting fast food or even just like takeout like sandwiches, stuff like that. We were eating that stuff every single day. And when we started our weight loss journey, that was something that we had to adapt to. We knew that we couldn't be eating the same way that we were before. We were eating way, way over our points with all the fast food and takeout we were eating. So we still liked the food, we still missed that kind of food. And what I started to do was just make those meals at home. So I pretty much knew what they were, especially things like Taco Bell, which are so like basic ingredients. It's just like the tortillas, meat, cheese, lettuce, sour cream, tomato, like it really is basic. And the fact that you can buy mild sauce, you can buy their Taco Bell seasoning, you can buy the different parts and make it at home. And it's so much more filling, it's cheaper, and it just is overall better for you. It makes me feel better. It makes me feel more full and satisfied. And it just has worked better for me to make these meals at home. So I have a bunch of the meals that I like to do this with in my cookbook, even like a copycat McGriddle. We love McGriddles. That has always been my favorite breakfast item. I honestly don't really like McDonald's breakfast, but I love McGriddles. And so making those at home that are double the size, they're fewer points than the regular one. And they're so good. I honestly wish I made them more because they're one of my favorite meals. But yeah, just doing that kind of stuff at home really has helped. Even the other day, Adam and I were both craving brunch so badly. And there's this brunch place called Syrup that we'd love to go to, but I'm not kidding. I would say the meal that I track would probably be 100 points if I actually tracked everything because I get cinnamon roll pancakes and then we get this giant skillet that has like fried chicken and it is so, so good, so indulgent, but something that I don't like to have very often because it doesn't make me feel great and it just really kind of throws me off track sometimes. So as much as we enjoy going and doing that, we do it in moderation, but we had just eaten out like the day before and we both woke up the next morning wanting brunch really bad. So I just made us a brunch at home where I made us French toast with fresh sourdough and fresh berries from the market. And then I made us these giant potato bacon sausage skillets that were four or five points, which I'm not kidding at the restaurant, it probably would be like 30 or 40 points for the skillet that we eat. And it was pretty much the same portion. It kept us just as full and it was so good. The sourdough French toast was so good. Again, way, way less points than if I were to have gotten the cinnamon rolls, but it still felt like I got to indulge and enjoy myself. So making fast food and takeout meals at home, it doesn't have to be that complicated either. I just kind of look at the basics of what they do at the restaurant or whatever, and then try to assemble it with the ingredients I have at home. That is something that has helped Adam and I so, so much because we crave takeout a lot. We used to get it all the time and it's something that's just helped us to stay consistent and on track without always indulging. Okay, tip number five is to just add in some extra movement whenever you can. So this is something that I didn't really focus on too much in the beginning because in the start of my weight loss journey, I was focusing solely on my nutrition and what I was eating. But as I continued to go and 
lose weight and then I started to incorporate more movement and exercise. I started to focus more on just like the extra little things I could do. So even if we're going out to the mall or something, taking the stairs over the escalator, which it sounds so small, but those little changes really do make a difference because your overall calories that you burn from working out really is not that much when you look into the total calories you burn throughout the day. So we also have the calories that we burn from just doing movement throughout the day, which is called NEAT. It is non-exercise activity thermogenesis. And so these are the things that we do when we're like walking around the store to get groceries. And when we walk up the stairs, like I said, versus going up an escalator or taking the elevator, stuff like that. Those little things, the extra movement that we do throughout the day, me waving my hands in the air, like all those calories that we burn, they actually do add up. And so when I realized that, then I started to make that just a little bit more of a focus. So it's small changes or even like when I'm sitting working on something and I know I need something. And a lot of times I'll either just like put it off or I'll call Adam and be like, hey, can you grab me this? But instead I just think, okay, I just need to get up, walk down the stairs, go back upstairs. Like it'll take me 10 seconds and it'll be worth it to just get those extra few steps in. It sounds like it's nothing, but it really, really does add up. Little things like that that aren't really like planned, but as I'm in the moment, if I can add some extra movement in, I'm going to do that. And even just like parking at further spots at stores when it's nice out, I try to find further parking spots just so I can walk further into the store because it helps me just get a few more steps in. So little things like that can become really helpful habits that can actually lead to some big results. Okay, hack number six is to drink a lot of water and to have a method that works for you to drink a lot of water. So for me personally, lately especially, it has been to use a one liter blender bottle. So that way I can just focus on getting four of those water bottles in in one day and that is a gallon of water. So that's my main goal for the day is to just drink at least one gallon of water. If I'm more active, I do kind of change that up if I need to. So what I do is I just start the day with one blender bottle filled and then I make sure that I can just drink four of them throughout the day. If it's been a little bit and I notice I haven't drank any, I can know how much is left of that water bottle that I need to drink. Whereas when I used to do the full gallon jug, sometimes it just seemed kind of overwhelming and I couldn't always see how much was in it. I did used to use the half gallon jug when I first started my journey and I would just try to drink two of those in a day. And that was actually pretty good for me and I stayed really consistent with that. But for some reason with the blender bottle, I don't know if it's just the mouthpiece is easier to drink water and just having four space throughout the day doesn't seem as overwhelming is like one big gallon, which again, if that's what works for you and you just know you need your gallon that you have to finish by the end of the day, do that because that'll keep you consistent. But for me, finding ways and honestly kind of switching them up every now and then has really helped me. So right now I'm in the phase of my blender bottle. I've been doing that for a few months now and I have actually consistently had a gallon of water every single day for almost three months now since I've started doing this. And one thing I've noticed is it's actually really cleared up my skin. I know there's probably other things that have to do with that, but that is the one thing I've really changed recently and my skin has cleared up so much. And so I think that it has to do with drinking my water consistently and actually getting my water intake every day, but finding a little trick that can help you to stay on track with that is really, really helpful. Okay, tip number seven is to make snack mixes. So I talk about these on my channel. I have a few videos where I show different snack mixes that I make. I try to incorporate them in different, like what I eat in a days and stuff, but I can definitely show them more. But it's just a way that when I want something salty, I can have a pretty big portion of a snack and it's not too high point because I keep it low by making a snack mix. And I'm one of those people that I like to just stand in front of my pantry and I haven't really shown our pantry, but we've got like two sliding drawers or three sliding drawers that are just full of snacks. And if I just stand in front of it, I can go from bag to bag to bag to bag and just keep eating. And that's kind of where I started switching over to the snack mix was because I realized like, okay, I kind of need to stop this. It's getting out of control where I just keep snacking without like, measuring portions or anything and tracking anything. So what I do is I make some air pop popcorn, which on WW is zero points. It's a good lower calorie option that you can have a good portion of. So I make a batch of that and then I take however much I wanna use. I usually use the same bowl every time and I fill it up with the popcorn, but not all the way because then I add some other things. So what I do is I'll pick like two, three, four snacks that I wanna include in the snack mix. Usually I go with some type of like theme so that they all go together, but I pick a one to two point serving of each 
snack. And then I usually just use my food scale and measure it out or I'll count it out if that's how it is. And then I mix it all together. And it actually makes a really good portion. Even just using a one point serving of all these snacks, it adds up. And then it's like four or five points for the entire mix, but it is very filling. It's very satisfying. It's salty and it really satisfies my craving for snacking and wanting a variety of snacks. That's something that's also just helped with my binging, honestly. And it's helped me to not feel restricted, not feel like I'm missing out still have fun because I have fun picking the different snacks that I'm gonna put in there and it just really works for me so if you haven't tried snack mixes I definitely recommend it if you're someone who likes to snack on a bunch of different things and you struggle with portion control I make my snack mix it fills up an entire bowl and then I get out of the kitchen so that I'm not tempted to add more I eat my snack mix and then usually I'm satisfied after that so that is what I do for snack mixes. Okay, hack number eight is just to focus on kind of getting rid of some of those higher calorie drinks, paying attention to what calories you are drinking, and maybe making some lower point swaps. So that was something that I realized in the beginning of my journey was how many of my calories I was drinking in a day. I was almost drinking as many as I was eating, which definitely contributed to my weight gain. And so I started to find lower point options that would still like satisfy what I wanted. Of course, Water has been my main focus since starting my weight loss journey. I really, really make drinking water a priority, but I used to get coffee out. I used to love getting even just like very high point Starbucks drinks, Frappuccinos, stuff like that. So being able to make lower point drinks at home and trying to figure out how to do that has really helped. That's kind of where protein coffees came in and those have also been so game changing for me from like the first day of my weight loss journey. That was something I used to always bring to work and I still drink them all the time because they help me to stay full. I get my coffee in and I get a good amount of protein in. If you guys don't know what a protein coffee is, I pretty much just use two shots of espresso from my Nespresso maker that I have at home. Or sometimes I would do this at a coffee shop. I would just order espresso and then I would make my protein coffee there if I was like working on stuff or something. But I do the shots of espresso, a scoop of collagen, which also adds about 10 grams of protein. Then I mix that together. I add in some ice cubes and then a Quest salted caramel protein shake, which you can use any protein shake like that. But the Quest salted caramel, I think tastes the most like a Starbucks drink with coffee. So I add that in, I add the ice, like I said, Head, mix it all together and then I have a three-point coffee and it keeps me so full every time I'm surprised about how full it keeps me because I will like realize hours after I finished it like oh I need to eat again like I didn't even realize that this actually kept me full and satisfied for so long and that used to be really helpful at work when I'd have to wait to take my lunch break so taking those high calorie drinks I used to have and replacing them with lower calorie options like that same with pop I used to really drink a lot of pop and now it's kind of the point where I honestly just can't because it's really sugary and it upsets my stomach but I still do like the carbonation sometimes and the flavor. So just finding different Olipops or different like those types of drinks that are similar. Also, when it comes to alcohol, we used to drink a lot of our calories in alcohol, whether it was like Mike's Hard Tall Boys, stuff like that. I always really liked kind of like sugary drinks. So finding lower point seltzers has made it possible for me to continue to drink alcohol occasionally. Also using Mio's, like the Crystal Lights or the Mio squirt bottles, things like that to flavor water. Then I can have water with my alcohol and it's much more hydrating, but I'm still able to get some alcohol and I'll usually add like hard liquor, rum or something to water with a Mio. That is just some of the ways that I've been able to swap out high calorie drinks and really pay attention to what I was consuming and have lower point and healthier options that just make me feel better. Okay, then hack number nine is just to find any food substitutes that you can for the foods that you like to eat that are just lower point options, higher protein, higher fiber, those types of things will really make a difference. And even if it's just like one small swap or substitute, it really can add up. So certain things that I like to do, whether it's like bolt house dressing, I really, really love ranch dressing. And that was one thing that I was like, I don't know how I'm gonna keep eating ranch when I started WW because I know how high point it is and I know how much of it I eat. And that was right when I found bolt house ranch, which just became my favorite since then. I still use it, I love it so much. And it allows me to have ranch for way fewer points than I was in the past. I can still have a decent portion of it and I don't feel restricted or anything. And it's just a better option for me that I can incorporate. Also with things like Greek yogurt, which I know a lot of people aren't a big fan of non-fat Greek yogurt, but it really can be a good high protein substitute when I mix it with tuna. I've honestly noticed that 
light mayo versus using the non-fat Greek yogurt, I really don't taste much of a difference when I add seasoning and stuff to the tuna. So I've just been using the Greek yogurt and keeping it at zero points and it adds more protein that way. And again, it's just an option that makes me feel better. Really finding those things that you enjoy, the substitutes that you actually enjoy. So not substituting foods you like with foods you don't like, but substituting foods you like with other foods you like can still work. And we have been able to find so many foods that we do like that we can swap out that are lower point options, even like bear bells. I honestly consider those like a candy bar to me. And a lot of times I'll have them as like a dessert after dinner or something when I want to get more protein in for the day and I'm craving a hundred grand bar because those are my favorite candy bars and I just want one so bad. Then I just eat a creamy crisp bear bell for five points and it is 20 grams of protein, five points, keeps me within my points for the day and it satisfies me. I feel like I'm actually eating a candy bar. Those types of things really, really, really help me to stay on track. My whole kitchen is just packed with different substitutes that I've pretty much made food swaps with and they just are sustainable for me. Okay, hack number nine is to just keep things simple when it comes to planning meals. And in the past, I always thought like I had to do these complicated recipes every time I cooked or just like, I always would get overwhelmed with trying to add in vegetables and protein and all the stuff like that. So what I've done now, and since I've started this journey is just focusing on, first of all, zero point foods. I feel like with WW, it helped me to focus on building my meals off of zero point foods first, but also, focusing on adding a vegetable, focusing on adding a protein, then a carb, and then kind of the extra stuff. That's kind of how I look at it when I think about building a meal, whether it's a breakfast, lunch, or a dinner. So for breakfast, I know, okay, this morning I'm gonna have eggs because I just already know I want eggs, but I've got veggie mix made for it. So I've got my veggie, I've got eggs as a protein, and then I usually add a chicken sausage or bacon as well because I know that's a protein. And then I add some type of potato or I make toast, something to get me a carb. And and then that's when I'll add the extra stuff like cheese, which also adds more protein, but I'll add a little bit more cheese. I'll add maybe some hot sauce, like any of the additional things that I add, that's like the last thing or any things that have points, I usually add those last. That's just how I think of it and I keep it simple and it has made it so much easier for me. So same thing with lunch. If I'm making a rice bowl, I start with the base of rice, that's my carb. Then I start with whatever veggies I can add. So I know I have a veggie mix in the fridge. I've got shredded lettuce and I've got cucumbers. So I'm gonna use those things. Then I look at what proteins I have and say today I have shredded chicken, but maybe some other time I have grilled chicken or chicken sausage or a leftover turkey burger or something like that. Then I'll take that protein and add it. Then after that, I pick like cheese if I'm adding cheese or a dip or a sauce or something like that. The additional stuff that I have to track and that's how I look at it every time. Same thing with a wrap. I start with a tortilla, which I have my low carb tortilla. And then I think, okay, I wanna add veggie mix cause I have that. I have shredded chicken cause I have that. And then I pick like the hummus I'm gonna be putting or if I'm gonna drizzle cheese on top of it. So it's just like that. I kind of look at meals in that way instead of thinking of some overwhelming recipe or thinking about just what I'm gonna do and like feeling lost when it comes to building a meal. I pretty much just start there and it helps me so much. Anyway, those are just some of the things that have really helped me on my weight loss journey. I hope that this video was just like a good reminder or maybe if you're struggling, you could pick up one or two of these habits and start incorporating and see if they work for you. With all of these though, these are all things that help me to stay consistent, which is the most important thing when it comes to weight loss is consistency. So all 10 things that I listed today are things that I've been doing pretty much from the start of my weight loss journey and I have stuck with them until this day and I will keep doing them because it's what works for me and it's what makes this lifestyle sustainable and allows me to have balance and enjoy the things I love because really consistency is what's gonna keep you going and having a sustainable lifestyle is what's gonna make this last and it makes it easier to just go day to day and of course it's not easy still but it does make it easier to go day to day when I've already built these habits for my Myself and I just know what I need to do. But anyway, these are just 10 of the hacks and tips that have really helped me to stay consistent with my weight loss journey. This is what's worked for me. I hope these help you. If you enjoyed this video, please go ahead and give it a like and subscribe to my channel. I really appreciate it. Thank you guys for watching and I will see you next time.